It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live! This week, starring special guest star, Mr. Ralph Murphy, all the way from Nashville. Yay! Woohoo! Thank you, fake band. Thank you, fake audience. Welcome, real guest. How are you, Ralph? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's like we've never met. We actually just got back from golfing. We spent, uh, uh, I don't know, four. Again, yeah, and again, <laughs> four and, and, and again. a half hours on the golf course. It's our annual two-day golf outing, and uh, we still made it in for taxi. I'm looking at the wrong, I keep forgetting the camera's over there now. Anyway, glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Um, Glad to be here. <laughs> Let's talk about golf. <laughs> Actually, it was nice. It was supposed to rain today, and it ended up not raining. So we were happy about that. The weather was pretty good. We got paired up with a couple of nice guys. And uh, we're going back out tomorrow. Yay. Anthony and John. Yep. So Anthony and John, if you're watching today's show, thanks for being such good guys on the course. Um, so what we're going to do today, uh, for those of you who don't know, Ralph is a hit record producer, a hit songwriter, uh, was vice... Professional fool. <laughs> professional <laughs> fool. Professional golfer. Uh, Ralph was, uh, what was your official title? Uh, vice president of international at ASCAP for yes. like 25 years or something, maybe more? For about... 25 years. All right. and 27 years. 27 years and still consults for uh, ASCAP and flies all over the world. I mean, seriously, not a month goes by where this guy's not on a plane to somewhere. Uh, going to uh, Ireland. Toronto. Toronto. And uh, Ireland, England, France. Wow. Me down. Yeah. Looms large. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Seriously, you must have like 10 million air miles saved up. Uh, hello to everybody in the chat room. Hello, guys. We've got Jay Williams, Cheryl Lee, or Sherry Lee, piano guitar voice lessons, Tom Hoy, Bev Niven, Britt Fox, Gloria Covington, uh, Am Cool, uh, let's see, Marion Laird, Rosanna Angela, and Rosanna Angela. Okay. Anyway, uh, hello to everybody. So uh, many of you know Ralph from uh, his multitude of appearances at the Road Rally over the years. And what he does something that really nobody else in the industry, to the best of my knowledge, has ever done. And he does it exceedingly well, which is uh, distilling the numbers from pop hits and country hits from the year previous. Yes. Uh, and looking at things like song 2018. Length. Okay, so these are last year's hits. Yes. Uh, and, and distilling down the information of, of what they have in common. Like, and the averages. <laughs> right. Here's the average. Well, don't go into it now. We're going to save this for the end of the show. Okay. But I want to let them know the things that you look at, you know, like uh, the, the average length of time before, or how long does the intro last, when you get to the first chorus, um, the average beats per minute. And, and of course, these aren't absolute hard, fast rules. Like you have to write a song using every single one of these. However, the proof is in the pudding. Hmm. If, you know, if you're looking at the actual things that are hits, and these, this is the distillation of the information yes, that they, it is. So it's got to be important. Bring it on. Yeah. So um, Ralph is also uh, a great uh, critiquer of songs. And, and for many years, you know, we didn't do this the last two years at the Road Rally. Uh, Ralph ha has, uh, he's a giver. And for many, many years at the Road Rally, he would... Um, charge people, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks, whatever, for song critiques, and then take that money, put it into a pool, and Taxi would match it, and it would all be donated to? Uh, the Mission in Nashville. Uh, yes, Union Mission. There you go. Uh, to feed the homeless at Thanksgiving. And hmm. I think that we both just forgot to do it last year. <laughs> yes, so, we did. So anyway, uh, hopefully we'll remember, but we've done it for probably... I don't know, 10, 15 years, something like that. So this man is responsible for a lot of homeless people having a nice meal for Thanksgiving. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and the people who got critiques from Ralph got critiques from the master. <laughs> so uh, 
you know what? Let's give them a little sample of just like two of these now, just to wet their whistle. And then we'll do some song critiques, and we'll come back to that later on in the show. And the average is... Average of what? If you want the average uh, intro, yeah, seven seconds for a hot this, country. The, for what? Pop, hot, oh, hot, this is country. Okay. Hot country. Have a, a seven-second intro. Use the pronoun you on average about 14 seconds into the song. Have detail sprinkled around liberally. Be sure to honor the two-minute wall. Okay, so I, I don't want to give it all away yet. Um, but I overheard, I was sitting, when you were doing your presentation two or three years ago, I was sitting in like the fourth row in the ballroom behind two people. And uh, one person turned to the other one direct, you know, the guy sitting right in front of me and he goes, why does this stuff matter? Why can't you just write from your heart? Uh, <laughs> I tapped the guy on the shoulder. Because I said, you have to write from your heart and, and apply craft. This is basically a report card this on is, craft. Yes. Total craft. Uh, it's a two-minute wall. The consumer or listener gets bored if they don't have a major change in the structure, either breakdown, bridge, change of beats, New artist on that or whatever. You mean new artist, that's, like a, a featured vocalist or something yes. introduced? Okay. Uh, call, that's called the two-minute wall. Okay. Taylor Swift honors that religiously. Yeah, and, and she has hits. <laughs> yes. So Big hits. Yeah, really big <laughs> hits. So it, it's not like mandatory that you've got to incorporate every one of these things, but if you're aware of these things, they may kind of, you know, find their way via osmosis into your writing yes. soul and help you craft stuff with a higher probability of becoming a hit. The pronoun you is invite, invites the uh, consumer or listener into the song. Okay, because it makes it about them. It's relatable. Yes, totally. Uh, you've, all, you've used that phrase for, uh, I've known Ralph for almost... <laughs> I don't know, 27 years since the very beginning of Taxi, mm -hmm. I met him. Uh, and he's always said, invite the listener in. And I'm like, Ralph, you say this all the time. We talk about this stuff on the golf course. What do you mean, invite the listener in? And he said, well, if they're watching or listening to the song and it's over there and it's not relatable to them, then they haven't been invited in. But if you say something in the lyric that makes them go, oh, you. I know how you feel or how they feel or mm -hmm. I've had that experience, that's inviting them in. It, uh, it like like talking about her is not you. No. <laughs> okay. It's not you. Okay. So yeah, um, she's <laughs> everything I'm thinking of is negative right now. But you know, she's not a very nice person. Well, nobody really cares about her. I don't. But you're not a very nice person. Yes. What do you mean? <laughs> that's you I know I'm not a very nice person um, okay so that's cool so all right we're gonna listen to some songs do some critiquing and mm -hmm. then go back to this stuff uh, with a vengeance I really need to do something to keep myself focused on that camera um, all right let's uh, let us check out um, the song was it on a Monday which is number three on your list There we go. Um, a free pencil for your use if you need it. Was it on a Monday? Was it night or day? What time was it when I packed my dreams away? I can make a difference. Gonna rule the world. The right looks for me. Who was that foolish girl? It used to be so easy. Time was my good friend. I waited for tomorrow. Just around the bend. Time became impatient. Future turned to past. What turned into shit? 
There's no turning back People in the chat room talking about country. We're not only listening to country today. We're going to do some country and some pop. We're not going to be doing stuff like, you know, psych rock or uh, EDM. Uh, there may be some EDM influenced pop, but basically country and pop today. So, uh, what are your feelings about this? It doesn't arrive at the title in uh, 60 seconds. I'll wait for it. Was it on a Monday? That's the uh, the opening line. Opening opening line. Yeah. But me 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 me. Or I I I. Yeah. I, I pointed that out uh, as we we're listening. That it's very I centric. It's all about me. Yes. It's. Uh, Do we care about me? Her. It, I don't I. care about her. <laughs> and he means that in the nicest possible way. Doesn't uh, deliver me to the title in ab about sixty seconds. Mm. Um, also, you mentioned the BPM being uh, eighty something, I believe, and, and that was for country. So remember, all, all of his um, rules are primarily country, but much of this stuff applies. You do this for yes. country and pop every year, right? Pop. When you do your analysis, um, um, are they similar? You know, similar Average things like BPMs, uh, beats per minute, are 90, 93 okay. on average. And that's country? Yes. No, that's pop. Oh, we're in pop now. Okay. Yes. All right. And is that similar to country? Yes. Because the human animal isn't dancing at 8 o'clock in the morning. All right. <laughs> Drive time? Yes. Yeah. Which they're, is where they're consuming, hmm. yeah, consuming music in the car on their way to work, uh, or in the office, or yeah. in the kitchen, or whatever. Because they just aren't. 
You haven't met my, oh no, you do know my wife very well. <laughs> she would dance in the kitchen at eight o'clock in the morning, but she may be an exception. Hmm. Um, so what did you think? A any other um, comments about this it's, particular uh, song? Involved, self-involved to totally. Mm -hmm. And uh, was it on a Monday? I love the uh, detail. Was it on a Monday? Was it night or day? What time was it when I packed my dreams away? Mm -hmm. That's good. That detail lured me in, but it took too time, too much time, to uh, reach the title, and it didn't actually reach the title at all right I want to do it all again is the title or should be the title because yes. of where that is in the chorus mm -hmm. right um, yeah I'm looking at the lyric you're right uh, was it on a Monday doesn't make it into the chorus no at all so is that a hard fast rule that uh, I mean certainly back in, in my day in prehistoric times, the I would say ninety percent of the time that the the line that was the hook, uh, and now hook means something different in the industry today. But the the hook line in the chorus was almost always the title, and the reason, well, yes. the uh, logic, God's plan. I mean, yeah. Well, it, it was also because most most Havana? music was con what Havana. Havana what. Oh, you're talking, okay, I'm talking about back in the day, the reason that people asked, uh, the reason that the hook, the title hook was in the chorus was because people would be in their car and they would go to a record store because they'd hear something on the radio and go, I want to buy this record. Well, who they was it? They still do that. Really? Okay, yes. well, that's encouraging. So, you know, they could walk into a record store and say that song, you know, I Loved You, Gertie. Um, even, no. you know, but that doesn't happen now. No, it doesn't. Uh, anything is uh, titled pro appropriately is titled appropriately. And what if it's not? How does it harm you? It uh, makes it obscure. Good logic. All right. <laughs> Um, let's listen to another one, which was, let's listen to Keep It Coming, which is the next one on the list. I'm looking for one night 
thing when you move, it's a problem. Ay, I took it for one night thing, but for you, I can solve it. away it's uh appropriately structured verse bridge hook and coming com coming back keep a right, coming keep it coming and then yes. goes back to that okay yes and then verse two and then uh, the resolve is perfect I was looking at the chat room and the audience was feeling it too. People are saying stuff like, wow, it's radio ready. Um, so somebody... It got, is radio ready. So, yay, good job on that. So somebody said uh, there are hits outside of this rule. Um, I don't know which rule that person was referring to. Um, and people have asked me this in the past. Why do I need to follow them? To which my, I don't care. <laughs> my my feeling is th these aren't like rules that somebody wrote down and just made them rules for the sake of being arbitrary. This is not these aren't Ralph's rules. These are the observations of a team of people mm. that sat down and statistically analyzed. Hits. Yes, they did. Okay, so it's not like somebody just came up with these rules and says you need to write songs this way. These are just observations about songs that are hits have these things in common. Consumers so, or listeners, listeners look for these. Subconsciously or consciously? Yes. Subconsciously, okay. Um, also, somebody asked after the first song, how many times should you be mentioned in a song? Because I would imagine you could overdo it. If the first verse is me, 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 the second verse is you, 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 and the we is coming on the chorus. Okay, because that That's develops... That's a rule. It develops a story. Yes. Me, 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 you, 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 we. Yeah. Good point. Um, and somebody else asked... Uh, somebody. Th by the way, I didn't mention this at the top of the show, and I should have. Ralph is the author of this incredibly good book called Murphy's Laws of Songwriting, the book. Um, it's really kind of a distillation. Anybody who knows Ralph well, and there are many of us, uh, and some of us that are close friends that have heard these things a million times over many, many years, <laughs> and people kept saying, why don't you write this stuff down? So he finally did. And this book is a distillation of stuff that you learned from the great songwriters who taught you yes. and things that you learned. I mean, he works on Music Row every day. He works with the finest songwriters on the planet Earth. In England. And, and England, uh, Canada. New York. Yep, New York. Toronto. So this book isn't a, a book of step one, do this, step two, do that. It's common sense ways of, it's like you're sitting in a room with Ralph um, and he's telling you stories about this is what I learned from Harlan Howard or from other yes. great writers. And these are people that have had a gazillion hits over many, many years. Yes. So Harlan Howard never wrote the book. It took Ralph Murphy to write the book. <laughs> I uh, also analyze everything uh, 17, 18, 19. Oh, the uh, years. I'll do mean. that. Okay, well. so yeah, somebody asked um, that they bought the book, and um, I think it was Paul House said, I bought the book. How do I get the latest updates? Because it does change from year to year. Yes. I mean, I listen to your thing, your presentation at the Road Rally every year, and I go, oh, well, that's different from last year. Um, and I, it's, it's all on the uh, online. Oh, and what's your, um, your URL of your website? Uh, RalphMurphy.com? Yes. Okay, RalphMurphy.com. Bree is posting it in the chat right now. Okay. Yeah, you do got to get this book. Somebody saying great book. Somebody else said got to get this book. Um, yeah, uh, you'll love this book. You will absolutely love it. It's great. 
it's an easy read too. It's not like it's a lot of work. It actually is kind of fun because Ralph is a lot of fun. <laughs> when Ralph is in town, it's fun time. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one, which is this guy thinking about you. You, I love it. Yeah, right <laughs> out of the gate. I never make excuses for why I did you wrong. I've learned to make it through till now, but I've got to win you back somehow, baby. You said you'd take me back if I just fix myself. So I did everything I could. Turned all my harmful ways to good. thought sir unfortunately if you need to uh, start start the uh, 
first. Do you play the U card? When you play the U card, you need to tell them all about her, you, what's uh, going on before in your we life. introduce her. Or, I mean, or introduce her by giving some backstory. Is that what you're saying? You, the pronoun yeah. you. Who is it? Pl is playing the U card. Yeah. And you need to invite the second verse should all have been about her. Okay. The first verse. Oh, I see. Yeah. Is wine, 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 wine. And he's not and talking about the kind that's red or white and comes in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, and you, what you're doing, what, what you uh, mean to me. And then we. Got it. So. Invite the listener in. And this is a tough case, and this is something that I've seen in a million songs over the years, which is their personal stories. You feel for the songwriter, because obviously this person wrote this from a point of personal pain. It was a relationship yes. that went south. Unfortunately. And, and very inspired to write this very um, uh, painful song, painful for the writer at the time. Yes, it but is. But what it doesn't do is invite the listener into the whole story. I don't so, care. Right. I don't care. Because it's his problem, <laughs> not... You know, it, I get it. Yes. So... I don't... I'm not invited into the song. So how it, do you take a song that's about personal pain, my story, my girlfriend and I broke up, how do you... Uh, can you give some suggestions? How you, somebody... The you pronoun is in so important. You, you, you. Ga, make the second verse all about her and you. Right. And the, the, the first verse is about me, me, me. And the uh, second Are verse... Are you saying the first verse is about me in this song right now as it sits? Yes. Or, okay. And should be uh i left another another message you won't pick up your phone i know how she feels because this guy is a dead bit dead beat <laughs> <laughs> okay um is this a case you've often spoken about flipping the first and second verse um, that sometimes that when people write the second verse, they should stop and take a look at it and take the second verse and make it become the first verse? No. Does that... No. This is not one of those cases. No. Okay. I'm so tired of being alone is the title of the song. Right. And instead, it's called Thinking About You. Yes. Right. But that's, that's the one-two punch is I'm so tired of being alone. Got it. Excuse me, I just burped. <laughs> um, I had one more question. Oh, um, when you play the U card, it's really important to tell. Once you've uh, established that you're talking about you, the pronoun you, you uh, reinforce that. So does the song invite the listener in, uh, even though it's a personal song? Let's say that you and I were lovers, Ralph. Um, I, yes, not, you're, yes. you're, you're way too tall for me, but that aside. Um, so if you've broken my heart and I'm writing a song and it's like, you broke my heart. Do you mm. remember when you said this to me and broke my heart? So now I have brought the you into the song. Um, oh, damn, I just lost my question. I totally lost it. Sorry. Sorry. It happens. Um, somebody said they're always, uh, do we have to follow all these rules and started naming off a song that doesn't follow these rules, to which I would say there are always exceptions to everything. Hmm. But when you're going to place your bets, would you rather place your bets on something that has a higher probability of paying off or go with the exception? Um, it depends on if you're a betting man or woman or not, maybe. I don't know. Mm, yes. 
they're be betting a lot of money on that song. So when you sit down to write, mm -hmm. and let's say you're in a co-write situation, you've got a writing session in Nashville, you sit down with the writer, do you have to actually think through every one of these rules? Do you sit down and go through oh, yeah. a mental checklist oh, yeah. on them, or is it already kind of imbued in your soul so you don't even have to think about it? It's just You don't right. have to think about it. Did you used to have to think about it? When you realize these things, did you think, oh crap, I just wrote a song and I, you know, I made it all about me, 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 I, 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 and never brought a you into the song, no. or, or was it something that you've known for a long time? When I, I noticed that uh, after uh, about six months yeah. of li listening to the song, I realized it, so it became uh, boring. Most people, and how many, I think you were the person that shared this information with me, that Nashville has like 20,000 songwriters who have been on a chart at some point in their, yes. their life, at any point in time living in Nashville. So obviously there are a lot of very real professional songwriters mm. in Nashville. Um, totally real. Uh, oh, the best. I mean, you know, yeah. If you've never been to Nashville and had a chance to hang out with Nashville songwriters, you need to have that experience because you will be impressed. There's no denying it. You can make fun of country music all you want. It's not all about pickup trucks or drinking beer or wearing Daisy Dukes or down at the swimming hole. There's yeah. a lot of craft in, in country songwriting. A lot of detail. So are these... Are these things that you and your team of people have observed, are these things that... Also, are, it surfaces in pop songs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I yes. mean, you prove that every year at the mm. rally when you get up and, you know, show how pop songs are. So are these things that pro writers sit down and go through a checklist? And do they no. go back once they finish? It's uh, automatic with okay. them. Um, you do have a checklist in the book, if I remember correctly, yes. don't you? And that seems like a good starting point. If yes. I were a relatively new or not yet, you know, even if I've been doing songwriting for five or 10 years, but I've not written a hit yet and I'm frustrated by that, I would use the checklist. And it seems yes, like after please. using the checklist enough times that you no longer need to use the checklist. Hmm. After a while, it becomes endemic. Right. Makes sense, like anything. It's like baking or, <laughs> or crocheting, you know, after a point. Right, okay. Um, let's move on to number six, which is called Hold My Breath. <laughs> themselves God helps those who help themselves God knows I help my damn self God knows I won't hold my breath time stand still I'm waiting for the stars to magically align in the heavens Searching for the passion in me. 
a remedy Knowing if I stay it'd be the death of me I, I, I want all my God helps those who help themselves God helps those who help themselves God knows I help my damn self I, I want all Your thoughts, sir? <coughs> they played, the uh, writer has played the Yukar. Everything from then on, I need to hear about that you. Yeah, and, and it also ties to the chorus. I hold my breath for you, and the chorus is hold yes. my breath. Okay. And why is she so important or he so important? Mm -hmm. Let me uh, evaluate that. As a listener. Yes. Right. You've tempted me. You've invited me in. Invited me in. Yes. Well done. <laughs> well, I've been trained by the best, mostly on a golf cart. <laughs> mm. Seriously, if I, I should actually write a book on everything I've learned from you sitting in a golf cart over the years. Again, we golf once a year for two days in a row. I can't tell you how much I've learned about this industry and about songcraft from this gentleman. Um, Playing I've, the U card is really important. I've gathered that. <laughs> uh, do you remember... Uh, I, I have a daughter named Hannah who, uh, when she was about 14 years old, uh, was hot and heavy into songwriting. And, and Ralph is like a member of our family. And I think we we're probably sitting around the dining room table or kitchen table or something. Yes. And she played you a song called Suicide. And you had her change the pronoun in that song. And Hannah's very, very strong-willed. As much as she adores Ralph, and she does, she genuinely thinks of him as a family member and reveres him. But when he said to her, you should change the pronoun, and he just said it very like, yeah, you need to change the pronoun. She looked at him like, die where you sit. <laughs> the look that I she, get that a lot. <laughs> I really thought she was going to lose it. And, and you just said, do it, Hannah, just try it, okay? And she did, and she changed the pronoun, and the song was instantly 20% better like yes. that, and she knew it too, and it never went back to the old way. That was, that was literally, for me, the transformative moment where, it, okay, I mean, I always knew that you knew what you were talking about, but this was the first time I'd seen it in action. I get such resistance yeah. to that <laughs> all the time. Well, when you teach the classes at the road rally, Ralph does a thing at the road rally where, uh, like on, on the first day, he does a 90-minute class where people get up and, and they play their songs in demo form. Mm. And Ralph does analysis on it. And then they are charged with going back to their hotel room uh, and in the next 24 hours doing a reworked version of it and coming yes. back and playing it. I've never been in there because I'm always in the ballroom doing whatever I do down there. So for me, watching what you did excuse me, with my daughter Hannah, it was the first time I actually got to see it with my own eyes. When you do it with the people in your classes, are they really resistant? Or are they yes, go, oh, they yeah, are. Really? Have you ever had anybody throw a shoe at you or anything? <laughs> or, or, sort of. Or stomp out and walk out like you don't know what you're talking about and just get up and leave? They I mean, uh, look at me strangely. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they... Uh, say, what are you thinking? What are you dealing with? And they come back, though. Uh, are, are they, when they come back, are they like, wow, I can't Better. believe I never thought about this on my own, and, uh, and they've done the change? Yes, yeah. they have. All right. And it works inimitably. Yeah. Well, well uh, done. Have you ever had it fail, where somebody came back and made the prescribed changes and it really wasn't any better because the song just wasn't that strong? Some, I, you know what, let me ask that question another way. If a song mm. is not a great song to begin with, because look, yes. not everybody writes a great song every I time know. they sit down to write a song, right? Everybody knows that. So 
um, if they employ these rules, um, basically there, there's a phrase in the music industry about you can't polish a turd uh, yes. because all you're going to get is a shiny turd. Uh, have you seen that happen too where yes. the, these tricks of the trade of pro songwriters are employed and they still end up with nothing more than yeah. a shiny turd? Yes. It's the first time I've ever said turd on the show in, in 10 years. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it took you to make that happen, Ralph. Thank you. <laughs> Please. Um, one other question I have. This, this is for me, but I'm sure other people have wondered this. Uh, the age of the giant in-your-face chorus that we have lived with for so long in songwriting and in radio hits where chorus is just bang. Ask Taylor Swift. The, the choruses are more subtle now. You can still tell it's a chorus, but I hear giant hits that I'm going, wow, that chorus is not nearly as big and powerful and obvious and, and kind of life-changing as... They've moved it forward in the uh, song. Um, Half of the number ones yeah. in the song have, have moved the title forward. <clears throat> uh, half chorus, at least. So it's almost more like a refrain, yes. which was the, uh, you know, the, there I, was, I think uh, this is the right word, the progenitor of what ultimately became a chorus. I'm so tired of being alone. Yeah. It's all right, Ralph, you always have me, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's what friends are for, right? Um, all right, so it's not just me. That I, I see that, I, I would say 60% of the songs that are out there, I maybe know. more now, um, <clears throat> where it's like, what happened to the days of first chorus, verse chorus, bridge chorus, and out, and you had a pre-chorus that you could just feel this giant explosive chorus coming, and, and the choruses aren't explosive anymore. It's troubling because to me. Because they're, uh, every word or line in the uh, verse or lift leads to the chorus totally i understand that but they still don't explode like they used to i find that unsatisfying but maybe it's because i was raised on chocolate milk and now it's <laughs> not chocolate milk pablum so. yeah there you go i don't know it's uh... the first uh beats of the uh uh songs are uh, title Total title. What? <laughs> first song. The first uh, beats of the song yeah. are totally titled. Uh, uh, Havana. Right. So. Havana, na, na, na. Right. So it sets it up early. Yes. Okay. Um, and it, let's talk about melody for a minute. Um, I haven't heard you talk about melody today, but I think I have no. heard you talk about melody on occasion from the stage. Have you noticed, and it may not be in the study, uh, but have you had any personal observations about melodies? Because they are different now. They're, Beats they're, per minute are really important. Yeah, but melodically, um, one thing that we find in film and TV music uh, when members submit it is a lot of times they sound, the songs we hear sound melodically dated. Um, mm. like the um, the melodies sound obviously 70s or 80s I mean you can hear it even though they may have a more modern beat sometimes uh, the melodies still sound dated or they're I don't they're know they're lyrically different yeah so uh, they uh, carry the lyrically yeah different totally I don't know that I'm musical enough or able to explain melody. Melody's tough. Um, you know who actually did a really good job? Uh, I happened to catch part of his class one year at the rally, Jai Josephs. Hmm. That guy, um, and also, um, oh gosh, I, I'm, I'm Pat Patterson. Um, I, both of them, at various stages, not in the last two or three years, but probably five years or so ago, um, 
I ducked in and caught little bits of their classes and happened to hit mm. the melody part and thought they both did a really good job of not only notating that melodies had changed, but explaining how and why. I personally can't get it. If I were still producing today, I would not be able to look through the control room glass at the people on the other side and say, your melody sounds dated because, and it frustrates me. Um, why? Uh, because I, I want to be current. And mm -hmm. I think that most people need to be current when they're songwriters because currency because is currency. That's why I study what happened last year. Right. Two uh, things, 2018. Yeah. Anyway, do a melody analysis for me one year because I, I feel that's lacking in my personal quiver oh, okay. my personal quiver of tools that if i were back in the studio working with an act and i felt their melody sounded dated i would not be able to explain to them why it sounded dated and what they could do to improve it i live in a frustrated state all right uh let's move on to more than love and then we're going to go back to more of ralph's observations <laughs>
dying to hear what you got to say about this one. That's wonderful. The verse, lift, chorus. Verse, lift, chorus. And mi middle eight. eight. Yes. As I'm sitting here listening to this, I'm going, okay, in my opinion, this was the best song we've heard today. Yes. And it displays so many of the things that you've talked yes. about. <laughs> and we didn't pick these. Bria picked these while Ralph and I were on the golf course. So it's not like this was chosen by design. But look at this in the first verse. Uh, on, the, on that first day, I felt the change and I knew you were the girl hmm. that's meant for me. So you've already brought, yes. he's already brought you into the you. story right off the bat. Um, I know what they said, that I was bad and I'd break your heart, uh, leave you high and lonely, so fired up that you didn't listen to them. Um, going crazy inside because this is more than love. And then um, in the second verse, no need to run away. We can stay, you got, uh, you got everything, all you need is me. Uh, and through the years, baby, we'll make mistakes, but we can fix. So the great example of yes. you, you, you in the you. beginning of the song, and now it's about us, we, we, we. Yes. It did exactly what you said. So... Great job, really great job. Well done. Yeah. Um, any other observations about that one uh, before we jump into this other stuff? Wonderful. Okay. Um, so yeah, go back. Pronoun to you, intro, and detail. Uh, two minute wall, beats per minute. Human animal and dead end. Oh, let's talk about the dead end because. Um, I had to ask Ralph, we were talking about this stuff before the show started today, um, so much of what we do at Taxi is, is film and TV related, and we call it you know, non-faded endings, buttoned endings, stinger endings. In, in the context of regular old radio and record songwriting, you call it dead ending the song, which means that it doesn't repeat uh, or vamp on the way out and fade. Because it, back uh, in the day, yeah. uh, we used to uh, use the fade for to move a uh, uh, listener or a consumer along to the next song. Right. In my repro you, your repertoire. Right. They and might talk about when the band is coming to town for a show. They talk yes. about next, you know, after the commercial break, we're going to hear. Right. This one. Yeah. And uh, that doesn't happen anymore because everything's playlisted. <laughs> dead end moves the uh, the f consumer or listener feels cheated wanting totally uh, it goes yes. back to uh, Barry Gordy always leave him wanting more hmm. I, I think that that's why the Motown fade was invented what was the Motown fade as opposed to a regular fade uh, sure oh, okay cool well, uh, what else do you have on your magic list of cool stuff? Dead end. Structure. Fifth form. Let's talk. Can you um, uh, talk about what the forms are and give a brief explanation of each? Yes. <laughs> Second form is verse. What's chorus. first? What's first form? Uh, First form is predictable as first boring. chorus, first chorus, bridge yes. chorus, and out. It's like uh, what they uh, found. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, keep it a secret then. <laughs> uh, what, I have a whole chapter in the book on that first form. There you go, that book. Look, it even says the it, book. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any money. So, first form. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there Second you go. form. <laughs> if your goal is to earn income with the songs you write, you've got to ignore first form. Yeah. Well, not everybody does. Look, you know, I, I get fingers wagged at me from time to time because people say, all you talk about is, you know, writing hits or getting placements, blah, blah, blah. Well, look. If somebody wants to write songs for their mm. own personal pleasure, um, just yeah. because they love the process, God bless them. You know, more power Give to Give me them. the book. The book. <laughs> but 
I would assume most people watch this show or join Taxi or read Ralph's book because they want to earn income with the music yes. they make. We are going to give away a couple of these books at the end of the show, by the way. Just saying. Song structures. First form. First form is a wonderful old form used a lot in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. It can still be found in musical theater occasionally, and the songs of that era are still performed in clubs and theaters and musical reviews. We don't hear a lot of songs in the first form on radio today because because hit radio hated it. <laughs> <laughs> the song started with what was called a verse and then went to a chorus or refrain because the verse was generally different in tempo from the chorus or refrain. Radio had a problem with it, so they clipped it off. And they hated it, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Exceptions to this think I left my heart in San, San Francisco or Rudolph, Rudolph, Rudolph the Red Nose the Reindeer. Red, <laughs> reindeer. In these, both, both these cases, these songs are performed intact simply because they are enduring standards. They are not only enduring, but endearing. Hmm. I never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. Yes. Everything you say is right. See, I can say that because yes. I'm your friend. Uh, his wife, Louise, he's never right. Just saying, no. Louise, if you're watching the show, I hear you. I get it. <laughs> um, wow, okay, so second form. Uh, let's go. Sorry, I, I waylaid you there on, on the second the form list of forms. Is uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, instrumental, chorus, and out. The verse leads you to the chorus. Every line in the verse should lead you to the title. Mm -hmm. The third form is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge or middle eight, instrumental, chorus. And again, every word and every phrase leads to the title. Fourth form, uh, verse, lift, chorus, verse, lift, chorus, instrumental or breakdown, middle eight, and uh, the lift asks the questions why, where, how, but it also lifts the song into the chorus. Fifth form, verse, verse, it's like uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Verse, verse, uh, middle eight, instrumental, uh, verse, and then you can go back to the middle eight or verse, and the title either begins and uh, or ends the verse. The first of the last or first or the last time line of the uh, verse is the title of the song. Yesterday. Yeah. The most well-known example in the history of mankind, probably. Yes, it is. Let's go back to the fourth form for a minute. I had a question about that. Um, it's uh, so incredibly... Oh. Pit, uh, so the lift asks lift asks the question why where how, mm. but it also lifts the song into the chorus. So, um, it, uh, can you give us an example of, of the song if something comes to mind? Um, what you're going to go back and reference the one we just heard? Yes. Okay. They say it is going to fail, mm -hmm. but they don't know that our love's on another scale. But, oh, wow, they but. All right, well, I, I'm going to disclose who this guy is because he got it so right. James Russell, you're a rock star. You, literally, it's like everything you talk about yes. is in this song. Great job. Um, and interestingly enough, the thing that caught my attention about the fourth form, 
is that it asks the question, why, where, how? I mean, very, very similar to yes. when you're writing an article mm. or writing a book or writing a screenplay. You know, these are questions that get answered. So uh, you've talked about this mm. in the past, how a song is basically a really short screenplay that's got to be done yes. in you know, three to four minutes. About three minutes. Uh, think of uh, an elevator pitch. Yeah. That's what a song is. Yep. Totally. It's hard for songwriters when songs are so personal and the subject matter is so personal for them to not include... Get over it. Right, a million little <laughs> details that they think that the listeners... It's really hard to write compactly, to take a paragraph and turn it into a sentence that makes you go, oh, I get it. That's craft. Hmm. It's really hard to get there. It doesn't yes, happen overnight. It is. Um, I, I've watched some taxi members over the years achieve that goal where uh, I was familiar with their earliest stuff and thought, okay, you know, basically the song is, is, is a song. It follows a form, you know, and it's got a good melody and tells a nice story, but it wasn't an example of great song craft. And three or four years later, I've seen stuff from people where I go, that's like a Don Henley worthy line. I love yes. that. He, he's Don Henley's one of my favorite lyricist uh, and great at writing super compact stuff where you know a, a 10 word sentence means a, a whole paragraph of story yes and you get it you don't have to think about hmm. it you just get it um any other stuff in uh in your list of no okay that's it we're out <laughs> but we've still got 20 minutes so let's listen to more songs um, let's listen to The Way I Want It, please. This is the way I want it. I'm a cotton, I'm a cotton, I'm a cotton 
tries to hide it, to hide it from my own eyes. There's my audience. Yay! <laughs> Your thoughts. First of all, a woman can get away with that. Get away with what? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Saying, this is the way I want it. I want it. Right. This is the way I got it. You're owing me so you know it. And don't you t dare to start, start no fight. No right. fight. I want it. I want it. You're right. If a guy said that, yes, it'd turn the whole thing on his head and it would be inappropriate and yes. not cool. Because uh, women can get away with uh, telling you uh, to piss off. <laughs> totally. Remember where you heard it first, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's a great observation. You know, uh, I had a thought. Uh, you and I sort of live in two different worlds now because mm -hmm. I spend so much of my time thinking in terms of film and TV. Not that by any stretch that's all Taxi does. It's just... You know, like the second half of Taxi's career has been very film and TV focused. I listen to this, and I think if this song were polished a little bit more, with um, if the production mm. um, yes. were a little stronger, and I would leave out some of the story and just the hook. Um, uh, this is the way I want it, want it. This is, and, and what I want, I got it. Uh, just that alone yes for a TV commercial yes oh my gosh for you know there people in the ad agency world are frequently not always but frequently looking for female 15 empowerment. seconds yeah or 30 seconds uh, of female empowerment so, you know I'm yes. going out on the town w with my posse of girlfriends and, and this would be great for that yes um, a fashion type of thing uh, you know yes. brand new pair of shoes with you know a shot of the feet in the shopping bag I mean this is so strong for that sort of stuff it's not a hundred percent perfect for it yet but it's you know who closing you are. in yeah it is it's a closing in great way to put it um, it, it's also um, I don't know if I'm bastardizing the definition of the word alliterative, but it feels very alliterative. When I write for a woman or a, a write for a man, it's uh, different subjects. Mm -hmm. Different perspective as well. Yes. Totally. Um, we had something come up the other day with a member who was kind of ticked off at us. And part of, of this member's consternation was the fact that uh, the song that this person sent in was for a pitch for a female artist. Um, and I may mm. be getting parts of this wrong, but ba basically the story is right. Uh, it was a pitch for a female artist. And the person who submitted the song, while it was a pretty good song, not great, but pretty good, um, it, it was from a male perspective with a male singing it. And there are absolutely... No. Uh, well, but the, there are no. times where people in the industry, you can't say 100% of the time, don't send a guy singing a demo <laughs> or a pitch for a female, but you're making my point for me, which is the rule of thumb is, if you want to increase your odds of success, yes. not only send a female singing a song for a female artist because it makes it more relatable and easier yes. for the artist you're pitching to to hear it without having to work through that conversion from male yes. to female perspective. I would also go as far as um, maybe matching the key. Um, that, that if you were pitching to Taylor Swift, which mm. um, maybe she's a bad example because she does mostly her own stuff, uh, Carrie Underwood. Okay, so if you're pitching to Carrie Underwood, I wouldn't pitch something that's so rangy that she couldn't sing it. I would no. find whatever key is her comfort zone, sit down and look at her last five hits and go, okay, three out of five of those are in the key of A. So mm. if I present my demo with a female vocal from a female perspective on a female subject, uh, in the key of A, I've done several things that increase my chances of having that song stick. Yes. Also, uh, getting the uh, artist involved as a writer is How do you do that? very important. 
you know, I'm really glad you brought that up because it seems like that happens more often than not these yes, days. Yes, they do. So what about these people that are out there on the other side, you know, of this screen in TV land, and they don't know Carrie Underwood. Um, they don't know Carrie Underwood's but producer. They or they... find uh, a new 15 or 16-year-old, and they groom them. That's great advice. Yes. So they're not trying to break through the wall of somebody that's got a posse of writers they already work no. with and they're comfortable with. They're developing their own. Yes. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of people in uh, Canada and L.A. and uh, New York that I've been developing for about five years. I remember that one girl you played me last time you hmm. were in town. Yes. Um, you played me something from her, and, and you've invested yes. a lot of time and effort. Michaela and, Lynn. Yeah. Yes. And things are starting to happen for her. And yes. And when things happen in a big way for her, you are already in the, the inner yes. circle. Yes, in, in the equation. Yeah. Great advice. Um, we've got 12 minutes left. Would you guys like a little Q&A time with Ralph? And don't let me forget, I'm sure that Bria will kick me under the table because I've already failed miserably at holding up the sign that says subscribe to our channel if you're not already. Oh, look at that. My hair is doing something funny today. Hmm. <laughs> share this with your friends and family members. Click the share icon. Make sure you like us. That's important. And don't forget to click the little bell that sends you alerts when we're doing really cool stuff. So, um, yeah, more than anything, uh, click that, uh, which button is it? That, oh, yeah, click this. Because if we don't see a lot of likes, I, I lose sleep. I get depressed. I feel rejected. <laughs> um, there's somebody who hates us that every time a show is done, they go in and click dislike, <laughs> the <laughs> thumbs down button. And whoever you are, we're gonna track you down <laughs> and hurt you. Um, oh yeah, Q and A. Um, oh, and don't forget to remind me to give away a couple of these books, okay? So questions, more songs, please play mine. It's called Love. Oh, yeah. Bria's got a question. Lay it um, on me. Uh, Peter Redhill asks, um, how do you feel about beginning a song with the chorus? Uh, the well, let me repeat the question just because she's on the backside of the microphone. Peter Redhill wants to know, how do you feel about beginning a song with the chorus? Because the uh, half chorus, the uh, 50 or 60% of the uh, pop number ones Start start with the uh, chorus. So I'm trying to understand this one, Ralph. Do you still recommend trying to be a successful songwriter first versus singer songwriter first? Um, okay, so now I if understand. you uh, sing well enough, then rock. Uh, go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um, if you don't sing well enough, don't. Uh, Ed Sheeran was in my classes about eight years ago. Yeah. Ten years ago. And uh, he was uh, still doing um, rounds. Okay. He was... Awful. <laughs> well, he certainly got past that, didn't he? Yes, he did. I mean, he's By, a great, uh, I think he's one of the great songwriters of, of this generation. Yes, yes, he is. Perfect is wonderful. And a great singer. He delivers his yes. material beautifully. Yes. Hats off to Ed. Um, I saw another one. Um, Ralph, how important is tempo? Are mid to slow tempo songs verboten? As long as it's not under uh, 60 beats per minute, <clears throat> because that's uh, 
actually uh, perfect was uh, in waltz time, mm. and it was uh, sixty beats per minute. Yeah. So there are, are no rules. But <coughs> you know, if you're an established artist with a great following, people are going to be a little yes. more lenient as to uh, you introducing something a little different that you know and, and when you're coming up you better be writing friggin hits yes um i had a question another question about t oh ballads let's talk country music for a minute um every time i've ever gone to a pitch meeting in nashville and have reached out to the people that i'm gonna go meet with they always say don't bother bringing me ballads everything needs to be up tempo <coughs> because the uh artists write the ballads Okay, and radio doesn't play that many ballads. No. Uh, is it harder, in your opinion? I don't know if there's ever it's been It's around 83 beats per minute. Is where you got to be. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, is it harder to keep an audience engaged with a ballad? Oh, yeah. Okay. People like to tap their foot and sing along. <laughs> yes. Versus ballads are usually somewhat depressing. They are. Uh, they, yes, you know, they are. Uh, you, you rarely hear a happy ballad. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Uh, do you have any more, Bria? Yeah, I have one. Um, okay. Tom Hoy asks, should the title be in the first line of the chorus? Tom Hoy asks, should the title be in the first line of the chorus? Either that or you can lead the uh, listener, the consumer, to the title. Every word... I, and phrase needs to uh, resonate with the title. These are the kinds of things that you will actually hear in a pitch meeting in Nashville. Uh, I've, I've never had anybody in a meeting say to me, now that song sounds like a hit. I've gone in, I, you don't play stuff that you don't think is gonna be a hit in a pitch meeting. And it can be pretty demoralizing, certainly humbling in Nashville because they're right. The publishers sitting on the other side of the desk um, are so good at, at being able yes, to explain why something doesn't work and give suggestions that it's mind blowing. So I they gone, have uh, NSAI has a sixty seconds pitch. Yeah, which to publishers right. So if in sixty seconds you don't nail the uh, hook right title. You're done. <laughs> the hook comes out. That hook, <laughs> the one, the <laughs> curved cane. Um, oh man, uh, Cliff Audrich the third, the younger, mm. and Steve Markland. Those two guys. Uh, other than you, uh, I can't remember her name now. A woman in Nashville, but I would say you, Steve Markland, and Cliff three. Um, Probably you don't humble me as much as Steve and Cliff have, um, because we're friends. Not that they're not friends, but man, oh man, those guys. There were times I wanted to break down and cry <laughs> when I played them stuff because you think you're playing them a hit, and they're not mean. They're not just doing it to like break your heart. Mm -hmm. They're just being honest because they've heard thirty other songs that day. Yes, and, and they don't want to spend their time coddling you, and. and in 60 seconds or less, you will hear a hit. Right. If you don't hear a hit, uh, second verse yeah. won't get it. Right. You're not going to rescue the song by no. going further down the line. No. Yeah. All right, time for a couple more. Any other questions on your end, Bria? Um, Gloria Covington asks, would you consider modern music to be rhythmic, including rhythmic phrasing? Okay, Gloria Covington asks, would you consider modern, modern music to be rhythmic and rhythmic phrasing? Um, and um, let's keep that in Beats the context. for a minute are really important. Uh, and, and it does seem like songs definitely right now are more EDM based, more rhythmically mm. based pop stuff on the radio. Um, I mean, what is considered to be mainstream pop so often is kind of a combo of um, urban and EDM and pop mm. all rolled into one. It's yes. not just um, 
Man, damn, damn, you know, it ain't James yeah. Taylor anymore. And the uh, uh, chorus comes at the front of the uh, verse. Um, and, and vocal phrasing as well. Um, things not starting on the one, starting on the and mm. instead. Um, melodies lifting in unusual places compared to where yes. they did five years ago or 20 years ago. That's the stuff that would be very hard for me if I were a songwriter. I don't know that I would be able to break free. We all absorb what we listen to, and that becomes kind of our basis, our foundation for songwriting, I think. Hmm. So if you grew up in the 70s or 80s, those are the acts that uh, have seeped into your songwriting soul, as it were. Yes. And the best thing that I think people can do if they're getting feedback from taxi screeners that their stuff sounds dated is don't listen to dated radio don't listen to oldie stations don't listen to the music you grew up with loving because that's the stuff you can still New love stuff it. yeah is really important yeah uh, force yourself even if you say i don't like what's on radio today anybody who says that isn't listening to enough stuff because there mm. is some great music out there. there's a lot of great music out there right now and it you've really, got to uh, listen to the hits. Yeah. People often say, oh, I don't want to write what's on radio today. I think it's a, a weak cover-up for I'm not capable of writing what's on radio today. Drake, Cardi B, uh, Sad, Post Malone. Let me get my glasses. Drake, Camilla, Carbella, Ed Sheeran, Maroon 5, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't read your own writing. I can see a scribble over there on the page. It's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> when Louise asks him, is there anything you want me to get at the grocery store? And she looks at the list and it looks like tools <laughs> because she can't read his writing. Travis, <laughs> Travis Scott? That's I, a, I, I'd stick to typing. Twelve. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> 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 All right. Um, we have one minute left. Um, the book. Oh, the book. Thank you, Bria. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna give away two of these books. Um, and Bria is going to, I'm gonna, in a second, don't start yet, I'm gonna have you guys type a plus one in if you're interested in getting a free copy of Ralph's book, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. And you can find it at ralphmurphy.com if you don't win one today. Um, so when you guys start typing in plus ones, Bria is going to shut her eyes and go up and down with her finger in the chat room and go bink and pick one person. And then she'll wait a few seconds and go bink with that exact sound effect. And, and pick a you can get uh, 10 bucks or off the, uh, the list price. Yes. At, at your site. Yes. Okay. Is it cheaper at your site than it is on Amazon? Yes. Okay. It is. If you mention taxi, Oh, cool. If you mention, I love taxi. <laughs> You've got to have the word love. In it. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know that. Um, thank you for doing that. Uh, okay, so without, oh, people are already typing mm -hmm. in the plus one. So, Bria, shut your eyes and give them the magic finger. All right. The finger of luck. Okay, go I always want to do da, 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 but I'd have to pay somebody. Wow. Holy smokes. Devin Walker. Devin Walker, you are a winner. Yay. And uh, Peaches Shranko. Peaches Shranko, yeah. Woohoo. All right, congratulations to both of you. Um, Ralph, thank you for doing this. Um, 
and you thought I just loved you as a golf partner. <laughs> I, I've learned. I so, hoped. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned so much from Ralph over the years, as have many of our taxi members uh, at the road rally. Which, by the way, the taxi road rally will be held this year, November seventh through the tenth, in Los Angeles. And if you've never been to one before, and you're thinking, no, oh, you know, go. Yeah, it, it's. It's so hard to get people to believe me when I tell them how incredible the rally is. They think, ah, he owns the company. It's just hype. It's not hype. Go to taxi.com slash rally, R-A-L-L-Y, no capital R, just R-A-L-L-Y, and look at the schedule from last year's rally and know that the schedule this year will be similar, but it's always like 15% better every year. And Ralph will be there, and mm. uh, I will be there, Bria will be there. And with any luck, the Taxi Orchestra will be there. See you guys next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Always great to have you. Bye, you guys. See you next week.